Together, we empower local spiritual development and educate Native American seminary students to serve God faithfully. This is the Native American Ministries Sunday Podcast. Thanks for listening in. Welcome to the Native American Ministries Sunday Podcast. Super excited to have you listening in today. I know there's a lot of things you could be doing today, and we're just honored that you would take some time out uh, to spend with us. Today, we have Mary T. Newman with us. Mary T., welcome to the show. Thank you much. I'm so glad you've, you you decided to spend some time with us today as well. So I thought what we could do is start with telling us a bit of the Mary T story. Give us a sense of your uh, your ministry. Oh, it's a long one. <laughs> my family has a, a real history in the southeast. Mm-hmm. My my family in northeast Alabama, when it was Indian Territory, uh, were on the Trail of Tears. Oh, wow. And as coming forward, um, watching everything that my family grew into, It was easy for me to become involved in Native American ministries, uh, Mm -hmm. starting on the district level and growing into now the jurisdiction and the national plan. Mm -hmm. So now, um, why? What was the personal connection? Why? What? Just because of kind of the area you grew up in, that was what kind of your original resonance with uh, you know with Native American ministries. It is because it's some people would say Native people are invisible, Mm. but it's also very hard for people to understand that. Just everyone I know, every language uh, in North America has a word for God, Mm. but people don't realize that. Mm. And so we really, uh, my mantra has become understanding through education. Mm. So we constantly, I constantly, everywhere I go, talk about the fact that um, it was in the Bible that God said, I put you where you're supposed to be Mm. in Acts 17, 26. Mm Mm-hmm. So that's what I go from. Very cool. Now, you're, uh, the committee that you have been involved in, a real powerhouse, lots of you know, great stuff um, you know, in, you know, with Native American ministries. Why don't you give us a sense of kind of what has that looked like? Give us a sense of what the, you know, the kind of functioning of the committee. We really took to heart the Book of Discipline and the social principles mm-hmm. where very few dominate, uh, denominations um, recognize tribal sovereignty. I'm very proud that we do. Mm-hmm. We also work um, diligently to fulfill the Book of Discipline where it says monitor, but also resource Native American Ministry Sunday. Mm -hmm. So over the years, we have created a huge binder of reproducible materials that we can uh, give the local church Mm -hmm. displays and books and the resources that they would not have an idea to look for. Absolutely. History is written by the winner. And so we we find the books that are written by Native people who tell Mm -hmm. our side of the story. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Have, have there been a few of those resources that have been particularly, um, you know, popular or helpful maybe for, for churches that are exploring Native American ministries? There are. The, uh, the you know, Ray Buckley's early works uh, talking about United Methodist and Native Americans. Mm-hmm. We, um, then we also played off of uh, the information that Tom, Tom Wildwood Fassett did with uh, the UMW study so that people can get a timeline they don't realize what a rich history there is in this country. Mm. They're not aware of how many Native Americans there are, Mm -hmm. and we try to get them to understand that in the state of Tennessee, as of 2010, um, over 20,000 Native Americans, but if you added another ethnic group, over 54,000. Interesting. Wow. So now, Native American Ministry Sunday is a very special Sunday in our church's tradition. Um, wh- what is special to you about this Sunday? You know, why is this you know such an important day in the life of our church? We personally get a moment to tell just a little bit mm-hmm. about how important it is to reach people um, so that they will understand mm-hmm. that Native people are alive. They're not free stride in history. Mm-hmm. They're not just in a book, and we want people to know that. They can come to a service and hear someone speak, someone play the flute, someone dance as part of the service, Mm -hmm. not just as entertainment, but as a part of worship. Mm -hmm. That way, we're able to say, we do have the resources on our conference level to share with you as a local church. Mm -hmm. What would you say to a church who, you know, they uh, maybe have never done Native American Ministry Sundays before, and they... Um, you know, they want to take a first step. They want to, you know, try something out. Um, you know, maybe they don't have a strong uh, committee in their, you know, their um, church. They don't have, you know, they're not quite sure where to start. Where, where, where would you suggest they start? I go back to the Bible. Mm-hmm. And I say, <laughs> if we believe that Jesus was, is, and always will be a tribal man, mm. 
Mm. And what better way for God to work with people who are from tribes mm -hmm. and from nations? And that gives them a little bit of something to think about that we put this back to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then we go forward to, we may reveal traumatic past, but it, we're not there to make people cry. We're, make, we're there for people to see hope. Mm -hmm. There's so, um, so many times that there is no hope in Native communities. Mm -hmm. But if we can instill hope, and Jesus entered the, the cycle of that, mm -hmm. then I think we've, we've pushed that a little bit. Mm, very cool. Now, when you look to the future, um, where are the bright spots? Where are the um, the ministries that you think are doing a, a great job, um, you know, working with, uh, doing great ministry with um, uh, Native American, um, you know, folks in, in our country? We don't want to be missionized. Mm -hmm. we, that, that has turned that has turned the corner now. Absolutely. And so it is really good for us to work with local churches who decide that they want that to be a part of their mission. Mm -hmm. And so we've, we've helped them partner with other places mm -hmm. who then those folks become part of their connection. Mm -hmm. And we've watched people go all over the country and come back and say, we want them to come see us. Mm -hmm. And they, they form a real relationship, mm -hmm. not to take the place of another place, but it brings them back to family. Mm -hmm. Very cool, Mary T. Is there anything else you'd like to share before we close up? I, I really appreciate you being on the show today. I do, I do. Uh, Tennessee conferences, we've, we've really rocked. Mm. We are partnered <laughs> with the Native American Indian Association. That's a 35 year plus charter with the state of Tennessee. I believe we're the only denomination they work with. And so mm. we sponsor a huge health fair that's not just about health, but it's about spiritual health too. Mm. And everything we give away is free. All of our resources we garner. You may see a, a young girl, 10 years old, walk by and we give her a book with great graphics t teaching wellness. And with her will be an elder who says, I don't want one, I can't read. Mm. So you see the impact in the community itself as people um, stay committed to being a community, not just one, but a community. Mm -hmm. I appreciate this. This has been super encouraging today. I really appreciate your, uh, your time, Mary T. Well, I wanna, I wanna tell you, yeah. to this conference itself, with, this will be our 14th year in August for mm. what we call Native Moccasins Rock. Mm. Over the years, we've developed a uh, powerhouse of leadership. Mm -hmm. We'll have about 20 guest leaders. Um, wow. I would say 18 out of the 20 will be Native. Mm -hmm. You may either all interactive, mm -hmm. you may be taking a class to learn how to make a basket, or you may be learning about genealogy or about the Bible and worship. Hmm. So there's a great diversity in that. There will be a baby. There will mm -hmm. be a granny. Hmm. We have a lot of children. We have a lot of youth. So it's a very uh, intergenerational event. Hmm. And this year will be our 14th. When is that and where is that? It's August 7 through 9 in Bon Aqua at Lake Benson, Lake Benson Christian Camp. Okay. And it, it is powerful because people come there, native, non-native, churched, unchurched, mm -hmm. community. Uh, three years ago, we had four jurisdictions out of the five represented. That was pretty wow. cool. That's very uh, cool. Usually 12 to 16 tribes. Wow, that's and people incredible. people leave there with tears, with yeah. laughter, and saying, I got to come back. Absolutely. If people want more information on that, where where can they find it? Is there like a website or is there a place online they can find more information about it? Sure. It's www.moccasinfootprints.org. Nice. Very cool. Well, Mary T., I appreciate your time today. You have a, a great day. I know you're busy. You've got a lot going on, but thanks so much for taking a few minutes out to spend with us today. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Ski, as we would say from Cherokee. Thank you. Together, we empower local spiritual development and educate Native American seminary students to serve God faithfully. This is the Native American Ministries Sunday Podcast. Thanks for listening in.